So I'm going to be showing you guys how to solve the SETI two-dimensional heat transfer problem. They give us the dimensions of the plate, and they tell us the boundary temperatures, and they tell us that delta x is equal to delta y. Uh, this is convenient, so it's going to make these equations simplify down to that one. So the first thing we can write is our height is 3, our width is 3, call us our width and height. Now we're going to have four nodes, so we'll say that n is equal to 4. So coming over to MATLAB, you start typing some stuff in. We'll say n is equal to 4, w is equal to 3, h is equal to 3, and then we're going to need to make a, an x and y vector. So x is going to be equal to line space. And we want this vector to start at 0, go up to W, and get chopped up n number of times. And then we're going to need Y to go to line space, making the same exact thing. And then in order um, to store our boundary conditions and have a place to calculate stuff, we're going to need to make an empty matrix. So we're going to do T is equal to zeros of n. This is making a matrix that looks like this. Just all zeros. And then we need to tell our boundary conditions. So for example to tell that the entire top row is uh, 100 degrees. We'll write the temperature for row 1 and column 1 to n is equal to 100. And that'll just fill a matrix that looks like this. So in MATLAB, I'm just going to go ahead and paste those in. Because uh, before it's TIJ, I runs down, J runs across. And then we're going to be using while and for loops. So we need to tell it a tolerance. We'll do 1 E to the negative 6. We'll give it an error number. So that you go to one. And we might want to count the number of iterations that we're doing. So we do k is equal to zero because it'll start our counter at zero. And then so now we need to do the while loop. So we're gonna say while the error is greater than the tolerance. K is equal to k plus one. This is going to keep count, so every time it goes through, it will add 1 to k. And then every time that it does the loop, it's going to be updating the temperature value. So we need to store the, that value and rewrite it for every loop. Every loop, the t old is equal to t. And now we're going to do tab, so we need to end that for the for loops. So for i equal to 2 to the n minus 1. Uh, the reason for this 2 to the n minus 1 is that for right now it's calculating 2 and 3, which is 2 and 3 here. Because you don't count, uh, you can't do math on the first node because you already have that boundary condition, and you can't do it on the last node because you already have that boundary condition. And we'll do for j is equal to 2 to the n minus 1. So we're going to do the same thing in the x and y. We're going to go ahead and give it that temperature equation. I'm just going to paste it in. And then we need to put end. This is going to close the first for loop. End. This will close the second for loop. And then we're going to do error is equal to max parentheses max parentheses abs absolute value 
of t old minus t. Uh, we're going to want this thing to run until the newly calculated value of t and the previously calculated value of t are equal or approximately equal. Then we'll click end. So we'll click run. And here's the temperature values. So for node 1, it'd be 287 and so on. And then you can do some more stuff with this. You can um, add some plots. So I'll paste uh, put some plots I have. And if you click run, bring it over, you'll see some stuff like this. So this example only called for four nodes to be calculated. Uh, the accuracy of our temperature distribution is pretty low. If you look at this plot, you'll see that the lines are pretty much straight and it has some kinks in it. Um, so all we have to do to make it more accurate is just increase the number of nodes. So we'll just increase it to 40. And you can see now it's a lot more smooth. And additionally, if you go to T, all the temperature values are here for each node. 